I've been privileged to witness some extraordinary events during my years at 60 Minutes, but perhaps none so touching, so deeply personal as the story you're about to see. This is a story out of Africa, about a four-year-old girl and her baby brother. They're just a tiny part of the flotsam and jetsam of strife-torn Ethiopia. No parents, no home, and certainly no future. But then came news from Australia, a couple from Canberra who were desperate for a family of their own, desperate to give unconditional love to those who had none. Along the way, there are tears, a surprising twist, and finally, well, an ending that will make you believe in hope. In an orphanage in Addis Ababa, a brother and sister sit studying photos, waiting patiently for the moment their lives will change forever. The moment they meet their new Australian parents. I wonder what their first reaction's going to be. Now, just minutes away, those new parents, Jenny and Tim Gable, are fighting fear and swallowing tears. I'm keeping my mind off it. I know you are. <laughs> Yeah, it's been hard to think about anything else, hasn't it? Yeah. They have no idea what's about to happen. A journey that's been two years in the making. It will bring great joy and a heart-wrenching surprise. There's so much ahead of them. Five metres up now from the Rabbitohs goal line. It's a world away from where this story begins, in suburban Canberra, with the Gables, a couple wanting to start a family. Raiders in for a try. 16 and a half minutes remaining before 42-year-old Tim is a sports broadcaster for the ABC. And Jenny, who's 44, is an academic. So I'll see right. you at half time. OK. OK. See ya. Go the Raiders. All right. They began see trying see for ya. babies eight right. years ago. When none arrived, doctors concluded the combination of two very busy lives was to blame. It's all about parenting, whether they're biological children or adopted children. They're, you know, people are parents of children, so parenting is an act that, that people do, you know, because they love children. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. They've never been there, but Jenny and Tim chose to adopt from Ethiopia because their Canberra neighbourhood just happens to be full of beautiful adopted children just like theirs. This is for your kids. Thank you. This is Eska dear. She's beautiful. Isn't she? Yeah, she's lovely, isn't she? How old is she? Four and a half. This, this is, is you, your little man. Iski. This is little man. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what the go is with the fingers, where he's mm. going like yeah. that. <laughs> he's such a character, isn't he? How old's Esky? Two and a half. Snapshots of Eskadar and Eskander arrived three months ago. The Gables have them strewn everywhere. We <laughs> sometimes talk to them when you go past. You say, see you later, Eskies. You know, off to work. <laughs> <laughs> see you, kids. <laughs> see yeah. you, kids. Yeah, these would be good for on the plane, wouldn't they? Yeah. But they leave Australia knowing very little about their children other than their orphans, their brother and sister, and their grandmother so, can no longer look after them. You might have to sit on it. <laughs> what do you think your first words will be to your son and your daughter? Uh, Jenny might say, um, a mama, and I'll say a baba, which is mum and dad. And it's apparently that, that is something that they, they look for, they, they long to hear something like that. Yeah, basically mum and dad, and giving them a big hug. Is mm. that, yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey Tim. Hey Pete, how are you going? Welcome to Addis Ababa. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi Jenny, how are you? After two days of travelling nice at the unsociable hour of two in the morning, the Gables arrive in Addis Ababa the well, capital of you. Ethiopia. You look tired now. <laughs> Remember, you'll be leaving with two children, so what's that going to be like? No, it's going to be a permanent jet lag. <laughs> Is that your goat? Huh? Your goat? Yes. Yes. Has it got a name? Yes. What's its name? Yes. <laughs> the first day in Addis Ababa is a shock. It's the oldest civilization in Africa. It's people proud and beautiful and persistent. How do I get rid of this little girl? I've tried to have to try Ethiopia. Get along. 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 Get Officially, there are half a million orphans in Ethiopia, but most believe the true figure is double that. 
children alone because their parents have died from all sorts of diseases, the main one being HIV AIDS. Most of the infected children will die, but at least the ones that do make it to an orphanage will have care, love and dignity. The orphanages are full. Fortunately, most of the children are AIDS-free, but all of them face a difficult future. Is Ethiopia coping with the orphan situation? No, we're not. I mean, we are trying, you understand, but you know, the magnitude is such that we are not able to. In Ethiopia, Seble Makonen is considered a saint. She established this country's adoption program 30 years ago. These two Australian children Mm -hmm. They're relatively lucky that they have found parents in Tim and Jenny. Absolutely, yeah. This is it's day two and the orphanage has run to say the children are ready. Jenny and Tim are on their way. How are you feeling? I'm scared and a bit teary. Yeah, got to keep yeah. your emotions in check. I won't. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're very scared. Oh. <laughs> There's one orphanage in Ethiopia Hi. handling children for Australian adoption. Oh, no. And this is it, yeah, the aptly named oh. Koala House. Hello, Ms. Rack. How are you? How are you? Its owners, Lacour and Ms. Rack, guide adopting Australian parents through scenes like this some 40 times a year. Yeah. Jenny, shall we get yeah, them? Okay. Yes. yes. Are you ready? Um, yes, we, well, yes, we we're think ready, so. We're as <laughs> ready as we'll ever be, yes. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. 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 Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Aren't you gorgeous? How are you? Hello, Mr. Come on, here, sweetie. Ababa, how are you? Tim and Jenny gingerly introduce themselves to their children, and in turn, they to them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, well Very done. Good. Seven, eight, <laughs> hey, where did that come from? So how do you think your first 40 minutes of parenthood have gone? Is that how long it's been? Oh, well, it, feels it? Like, it feels like it's just been five seconds, really. Oh, and, um, they're just lovely. Yeah. We're very lucky. Yeah. Two years in the making? Yeah. Two years in the making, yeah. It, it's going to be an interesting experience for us both with them. Um, yeah, words. I think it's starting to hit you. Isn't oh, it? Yeah. yeah, okay, Dom. Well, I suppose you can call yourselves the Gables from Canberra now. You <laughs> can, yeah. We've got a family. They're just beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> a few hours later at their hotel, their long journey to a new home has begun. I just love this part of it because it's great. You can't wipe the smile off your face, bro. No. <laughs> Father and son, mother and daughter, the Gables are getting to know each other. He's a handful. Uh, he just goes all day. He's like one of those batteries that just doesn't stop. Um, he's a beautiful little kid, um, but he's full on, as most two and a half year olds are. <laughs> She's very independent. She organises yeah, yeah. everything for him. She folds clothes. She helps him clean his teeth. She washes both their faces. So it's very hard when it's a four and a half year old who's doing all these things. Yeah. Hello, you've gone back into your shell. I think so. She works through these moods. I I now know what mood she's in at the moment and then I shouldn't actually try and cuddle her or anything like that and then she'll go through other stages where she wants to be cuddled. At such a young age they've been through so much. The loss of their parents, life in an orphanage, to a new mum and dad 
and a temporary home in a luxury hotel. Tim and Jenny long to know what's going on in their young minds. And so, the next day, the Gables travelled the back streets of Addis Ababa to find the grandmother who relinquished them. As they arrive, there's celebration. The children haven't been back here since being placed in the orphanage in July. Everyone is on edge. I think I think she was worried that, that, she, that we were, we're not taking we're, her. We're, with we're us. going to leave her here and not take her. Jenny and Tim are in for a shock. There's one person who's desperate to see Eskadar and Eskander. She's a little girl the Gables didn't even know existed. Their big sister, Mirren. Her parents dead, her only siblings off to Australia. How must this little girl feel? At 12, they say she is too old to be adopted. Oh. <laughs> Over coffee and cake, the two families talk. Then Jenny and Tim venture to ask about the mystery of the parents' death. The father actually died about three years back in a civil uprising, mm -hmm. and the mother died about a year ago from sickness. It was actually, they say, sudden. Mm -hmm. Suddenly? Suddenly, mm -hmm. yeah. No. Offering no more detail, the grandmother says, with a family of 14 to care for already, she relinquished the children, hoping they would get this second chance. The Gables pledge to keep close contact, but as the goodbyes start, emotions overflow as reality sets in. Everyone knows this could be it. Meeting the sister was possibly, I, I found, the hardest. I got quite upset because I felt like I'm, I'm causing this to happen in their lives. But the grandparents always also wanted it to happen. <laughs> Did the grandmother say anything special to you or give you one special message as you left? She said, Basically, thank you, um, and she said that she loved them very much, and she was pretty sure that, or very sure that we were going to love them as much as she did. Um, so that was enough for us. But just the way that she embraced us at the end uh, was enough for me to say that she'd entrusted us um, to look after her children. How important was it for you to ask her how these children's biological parents died. The thing is that they are going to be asking questions later in life and we want to be able to answer those questions. We are interested okay. in their history and, and interested in where they came from. And so after six days together as a family, four very brave and happy souls begin the long journey home. 30 hours later, exhausted, the Gables arrive at Canberra Airport to an unexpected welcome from their family and Ethiopian friends. And when we saw so many people there, it, it just blew us away. It was, uh, it was incredibly emotional. And to see our parents and our family there too. What do you think of your new grandson, Mr. Yeah, Gable? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. One final journey, and it's home. <laughs> hey, look at this. <laughs> Realising that they'd seen the picture of those beds, and she knew what bed was going to be hers. <laughs> Gleefully, brother and sister run from one end of the house to the other and back again. You'd think they own the place. So do you feel complete now? You're home. You know, Pete, um, as we were driving down the road, I said to Jenny, I just turned to her and said, 
I'm the proudest man in the world. Having these two little kids beside me was, it was just a, a very amazing moment, and especially when she started singing Mummy and Daddy I Love You. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.